Hi, I'm Sarah from S Jane, and I'm going to teach you how to make your own rubber stamps. Okay, let's start with a quick overview of the materials. So, this is going to be the most important part. This is a big piece of rubber. This is called Speedy Cut by Speedball. Um, comes in a big sheet like this, or you can get smaller ones too. Uh, I got this at Michael's. I don't quite remember how much it cost, but um, it wasn't too expensive. And if you're doing a lot of smaller stamps, then you're going to have this for a while and get a lot of use out of it. So as you can see, it's kind of bendy. Looks like a giant eraser. It's going to be your carving material, most important. Then we have a carving tool. This is also by Speedball. Um, you can also get this at most craft stores or art stores. Uh, it comes with a bunch of different tips in the back, all different sizes, different points, and they just screw onto the front part here. Then we have a, a pencil, tracing paper. I like to have an original copy of an image that I just keep and I trace over it to transfer the image onto the carving material, which I'll show you in a bit. And I just use a number two regular pencil, not too sharp because you want to make sure you get thick enough lines when you're carving, you're not going to be carving super, super skinny lines. Okay, so this is just uh, an exacto knife would be fine too, just some sort of blade so that after you transfer your image, you can cut around it and you're not just going to be kind of wasting extra rubber. Uh, a stamp pad to test your stamp. Uh, when you think you're done carving, it's a good idea to just test it and make sure there aren't any more areas you need to remove. Um, this is a big fluffy brush. I find this is really helpful for cleaning out the stamp as you go along. You'll see things get a little dusty and kind of get these weird little rubber crumb pieces all over. This is really helpful to clean out the stamp. So it's just a old fluffy brush I've had for a really long time. And um, I'm just probably going to be working on just my craft table, but if you want to protect the surface you're working on, I recommend a little cutting mat or just a piece of cardboard or just something underneath so that if you're working at your dining room table or something, you don't get it all stretched up. Okay, so first thing you're going to want to do is take your image that you want to have on the stamp, and you can just go ahead and take your tracing paper and trace over it. If you have drawn your image in pencil, you can just go ahead, um, leave it as it is, and I'm going to show you how to transfer it in a minute. But like I said, if you're going to do multiples of the stamps like I do for my shop and stuff, um, I prefer to use some tracing paper. So I'm just going to go right ahead. And like I mentioned before, um, I like to not use a pencil that is super sharp because when I transfer that onto the rubber, the lines are going to be really thin. And that can be a little tricky if you are just trying to tracing around some standalone lines. So I'm just going to keep carving this. Tracing and carving. Um, and you can press down pretty hard too. The more you press down, the darker your traced images, the better it's going to show up. Now, another little tip I have if you're going to be having areas that um, are going to be filled in is on the traced image, I will go ahead and just kind of add these little lines in here so I know that this is a large area that I want to keep filled in. I don't want to carve this area out. Okay, so now I'm going to cut this out and then I'm going to transfer it onto the rubber. So my favorite way to uh, transfer is I'm just going to take this with the pencil side down and place it on top of my carving material. I'm not going to put it in the middle because that's kind of a waste and I don't know what other size stamps I might be doing in the future. Um, what I like to use is the tip of the speedball carving tool, just no carving tools or anything. It's kind of got a little ball, I don't know how well you can see that. But I just rub that over the image. Um, not too hard, you don't want the image to move too much. But 
and I just rub that all over the pencil lines and you can lift it up a little bit and see how it's transferring. So just do that till it seems like it's all done. And there you go. And then uh, what I usually do then is just cut around using my knife. You want to be careful, you're going to be using a lot of sharp tools here. So please be safe. And now it's ready to carve. Okay, so hopefully this didn't just get really dark. The sun's kind of hiding behind a tree now, but we're going to start carving. So, like I said before, um, this is just a carving tool from Speedball, and holds a bunch of different tips in the back of it. Um, I always start with, oops, it's over here, the smallest tip, and I like to start by going around the outside edge of my design. Um, just safety things, like I said, this is really sharp. Um, I've been pretty lucky. I haven't really gouged myself or anything. I think the only time I hurt myself was I put my hand down on the carving thing. So don't do that. It hurt. Um, but, okay. So, like I said, I'm just going to start going around the edge. You really don't need to apply too much pressure. You really don't want to dig in. If you find that your cuts are too shallow, you can always go back and make them deeper. Um, also, if you're working on something small, it's a lot easier. I don't know if you can kind of tell right now, I'm moving the rubber more than I'm moving my hand around a curve. I mean, this is, you can see this has a lot of little curves to it. So I'm just taking my time and applying not too much pressure. I'm just working my way slowly around these curves. I'm not even worrying right now too much about um, really getting in all these little spaces. And I will speed this up so you don't just watch me carve forever because as fun as it is, it's probably not that fun to watch. <laughs> Alright, so now that I've gone around the outside and kind of outlined some of these inner parts with my really small tip, um, I'm going to go ahead and change it now to um, probably not the most, the most, the widest one yet, but uh, maybe like, I don't know, the second largest uh, one. And I can kind of go into some of these bigger areas. Um, and start clearing out some larger spots. Um, I mean, you could do the whole thing with this little one if you want, but uh, it takes a long time, and I don't think it really looks so nice. Um, but yeah, now I'm just kind of going in around my outline. And um, a good way to make sure that you're kind of staying within your lines is you can sort of line up the edge of the cutting tool. Probably should have told you this when you started. But um, you can line up the edge of the cutting tool with your pencil line. Um, that's what I do, and I have pretty good luck with it. So that I always know, you know, I want the edge of my blade to always be right along that. Okay. So, I'm not sure if you can see or not, but I'm starting to kind of get some little dusty areas um, from carving. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my big fluffy brush and I'm just going to really lightly dust the stamp with it and just kind of tap it. And you're going to have these little bits all around too and I usually just kind of every once in a while I'll collect them and just dump them next to me so they're out of the way or just if you have a trash pile right next to you, you can do that. So I'm just going to dust my stamp and I'm going to keep carving until I feel like I have as much space as I need 
carved out. So I'm going to continue to do that and then I will test it and see how it looks. Alright, so now I think I'm about ready to test my stamp. I'm going to give it one last good kind of clean up with the brush. Um, I actually probably normally would carve a little longer, but I want to show you how it looks um, when you can see there's some spots that maybe you might want to clean up and see what those look like. So, I just got a stamp pad here. And um, another thing with this rubber, you're really going to want to use uh, water-based inks and they're really easy to clean you can just uh, use warm water so I'm gonna stamp it and you can probably see like right here there's a few little bits if I could clean up right there probably in the eye and maybe clean up a little more uh, around these edges so another thing that's really good about testing the stamp and inking it is you can see, you can actually see where these spots are that need to go. So like I can see the ink on that little spot, which was this spot here. Um, I can see on the eye and it's really going to help you when you're cleaning up your stamp um, to see what these little spots are that still need to be removed. Your hands might get a little inky in this part, so I guess just be careful. Um. All right, so cleaned up some spots. Um, if I want to make sure I got rid of those, I can take this and stamp it again. And that was a little bit of a sloppy stamp, but that was my fault. Um, now I can see that these little spots that I wanted gone are gone, so they're good. And I now have a finished stamp and like I said um, you can just run this under some warm water uh, and just kind of rub it lightly to get the ink off um, that's generally all I do to clean mine and then I just let them dry um, face down on a paper towel or just pat it dry a little bit um, but you don't want to rub too hard because this stuff is soft and if you're rubbing it and you're kind of hard on it you could ruin your image a little bit. But here we have it. Here is our finished stamp. Alright guys, well, that's how you make a stamp. Um, I hope this video was helpful, and I hope you try it out. And if you do, I would love to see what you make. Um, if you have any questions or anything, uh, you can just leave me a comment, and I will get back to you. And I guess that's it. Um, Good job, guys. <laughs> Bye.